The people here, they are really, really poor. They have poverty, illiteracy, and diseases. They are suffering in silence. This project started in 2014 with contact of one of the local physicians from Ivory Coast. He assisted us in getting in touch with the local government. When I was in the Netherlands, a friend of mine told me that uh, since I want to do a humanitarian job, it would be better for me to look on the internet how to, to get in touch with people that can help. And then I found a video of uh, Operation International in Ghana in the hospital of Techima. And then I sent an email. When I got here, I didn't know what to expect. I couldn't tell if the clinic was going to be something that's established and the facilities were capable to just go and get right into seeing patients and operating, or we would have to build something up. And it turned out we really had to build everything up. The ORs were empty rooms, there were no anesthesia machines, there were no beds, we had to bring our own beds. That first day was a huge shocker. We were all moving every single box from the storage unit into a room, sorting it and then building the OR so that we can be completely running the next day. So even the basic equipment like suctioning machine, even in the operating room, they didn't, they didn't have any of that and what they had wasn't working at all. We had our own portable suction machines that we, were, you know, we brought with us. So those were the ones that we were able to use. Other basic stuff like gauze pieces, you know, just flushing solutions, they have none of that. They don't have a lot of medical providers here. They do not have enough supplies to serve the patients that are here today. And one of the patients that struck me is a gentleman who has a six and a half kilogram tumor arising from one of his shoulders that limited his ability to live a normal life and earn his living. Uh, you see, one of the cases that came in my mind immediately is a man that I knew since I was a child with the, the messes in the shoulder. Since I was a child, I used to walk around and uh, he was hopeless, so I told my dad found him. We put him in the car to hear. Il y a une longtemps qu'il y a un beau jour, j'ai un petit ingénieur ami qui m'a dit, tiens, tu as un furon sur ton homoplate gauche. J'ai dit non, je n'ai pas de furon. Il a attrapé mon bras par là. Il me dit, voilà, voilà, furon. Il dit, mais qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Il me dit, bon, lui ne connaît pas. Donc, au fur et à mesure, ça prenait de l'enflure et ça prenait du volume. Et jusqu'à un jour, bon, j'ai passé dans certaines cliniques qu'on m'a dit que bon, c'est pas à leur niveau. Mais ça m'empêche de me coucher bien. Si je, je me couche, il faut pencher un côté, soit je me couche sur mon ventre afin de pouvoir avoir du sommeil. Et bon, ça me coupe aussi souvent le sommeil très vite. Donc, c'est tout ce qui est là. Bon, au niveau, quand je mange quelques fois, bon, il me semble qu'il y a un petit vertige aussi, je ne sais pas si ça dépend de cela. Bien, j'ai manqué de sang, je ne sais pas. I think it went pretty nice, and uh, he doesn't have to worry about uh, carrying that mass behind his back for the rest of his life. De toute façon, je vois aussi certains qui sont euh, sur euh, les lits d'hôpital. Je crois que je souhaite aussi qu'ils aussi puissent. Euh... Oh, what we have done for him, it changes life. Vraiment, euh, je les remercie beaucoup. Je suis, je me sens très bien à l'heure où je suis, à l'heure où je suis, puisque je me sens déjà rétabli à 100%. Donc vraiment, je ne peux rien ajouter. Les mots me manquent beaucoup. Donc, vraiment, vous êtes des bienfaiteurs. Que Dieu bénisse pour votre générosité. There was a gentleman that uh, had a uh, tumor of his parotid 
um, that involved a significant amount of skin on his cheek. Disons que ça n'a pas été facile. D'abord, c'était tout petit, tout petit, et puis ça a commencé à prendre forme. Au fur et à mesure, ça prenait forme. J'ai en parlé à maman. Elle a dit bon, ça allait partir au début que c'était c'était de passage, mais ça n'allait pas et c'était consistant. Les camarades me voyaient, d'autres se méfiaient, ils avaient peur. Ils se disaient, bon, euh, c'était quelque chose d'anormal. Um, when they removed it, though, they had to remove a lot of skin, and so we had to get creative and essentially use tissue origami to rearrange uh, the, the skin of the face in order to close it without tension and give him a very normal appearing uh, scar and contour to his face. La première chose que je vais faire, c'est de retrouver mes, mes amis afin qu'ils voient que j'ai changé. Et puis je suis fier de marcher, je vais sourire, faire des selfies, voilà, pour balancer. Cette opération même, j'ai appris quand j'étais à Tiebissou. Quand je suis allé vendre, c'est là-bas que j'ai appris ce que cette opération est, est venue à, à Divo. Bon, je suis dans, je fais, vend, je suis dans la parfumerie. Je vends les parfums, mais je n'ai pas de magasin, mais je, je, je prends les parfums et je me promène pour les vendre dans les villes. Et en 2009, je, j'avais, j'étais malade, je suis allée à l'hôpital, on m'a dit que je souffrais des myomes. Et donc je suis allée me faire opérer dans une clinique à Toumodi. Deux semaines après, j'ai senti que je faisais les selles Euh, au niveau du vagin. Et puis, euh, je suis retourné à la clinique. It was done in a fashion that was not really a good technique, so the entire colon was hanging outside of her body, and she used a plastic bag every day to put her colon in it and walk around. Uh, when we put her to the operating room and were able to examine her under anesthesia to do proper examination, uh, I discovered that they removed most of the rectum during the operation. However, we were able to refashion the colostomy and remove portion of the colon, and we provided her with colostomy bags. So now, rather than carrying her colon in a bag, now she has a, a, a properly fitted colostomy bag and a colon that's sitting inside her belly. Je sais que grâce à vous, je verrai le sourire d'avant. Quand je vais sortir du bloc et je vais me réveiller, quand je vais tendre la main sur le côté gauche et que je ne vais pas trouver cette énorme chose, je pense que je ne je sais pas, mais les mots, vraiment, c'est difficile. Vraiment, je serai heureuse, très heureuse. In the beginning, I didn't know that it would be such a big project. You see, I thought that uh, maybe seven doctors are going to just come and we will try to help 10 or 20 people. And then when we started, I discovered that it was maybe 10 times bigger than what I was thinking. So when I talked to my fellows about this project, none of them was believing me. Now that Operation International is here, in the city of Divo. Many of them are seeing an Operation International House helpers coming from God. I understand that we're, we're performing regular surgeries that are at home, are straightforward, but when you come here, this is life-changing for them, and they're just so excited that someone is willing to do it, let alone do it with no charge. You know, in the States, there's so many great surgeons. There are surgeons that do a lot of the same things you do, but here, you're the surgeon for these people. There is no one else who does this particular surgery in this area. This is something that I definitely appreciate now that I have a skill set that I can offer people and then really make a dramatic change whenever I come to a place like this, and I want to continue doing that. This place is very limited in resources, healthcare, simple things such as clean water that you can drink. You know, we have to brush our teeth with bottled water to prevent GI upset, lack of sanitation, lack of housing. 
uh, clothing, food in the area. It really, really makes you feel grateful for what we have at home. I feel that every surgeon should consider this at some point in their career to come out and, and treat these patients. You really do learn a lot. You really appreciate a lot of what you have back home. It really teaches you to really work with the limited resources here and become a, a better surgeon. And most importantly, the community is rich in love and rich in happiness despite all of this. With any humanitarian work, the special part of it is actually helping out the people. Looking at all the lives that we've affected and we weren't able to help to the degree that we wanted to, but each individual patient that we're treating, we're changing their life. So to us, it seems like something small, but to them, it's a life-changing operation that makes them either more functional, makes them more social, makes them a little bit happier, makes a mom survive so she can raise her children, it makes a father allowed to go to work so he can sustain his family. I feel the team this year uh, was amazing group of people. Uh, they came from different backgrounds, different culture, different religions. We had uh, physicians coming from uh, Texas, uh, from Atlanta, from Colorado, in addition to many of the old members of the team. Everybody worked together under uh, difficult conditions. Forever, me, my family, and I think the next generation are going to remember Mr. Alam, remember all Operation International team that were in Ivory Coast, because what you started, I think, is the beginning of something great that I don't even know myself. But I believe that we will, we will do more. So I just want God to bless each one of you. Uh, no matter what you were able to do here, it was great. I think that nobody's going to forget it. Thank you.